Time now for our CBS 21 News Political Insiders. Tony May on the Democratic side, Charlie Giroux, our Republican expert. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Let's talk about this state budget signed with about 15 minutes to go, I believe. And um, it wasn't as easy, I don't think, as it was last year, at least in the process, Charlie. I think last year they signed it with like seven minutes to go, so maybe it was easier. Well, maybe. <laughs> I heard, though, there were some last-minute uh, disagreements there in there. always are last-minute disagreements. <laughs> That's called the budget process. But It's, it's sort of good... like your budget at home. Exactly. Not, thing, not a whole lot different, but this is a good, solid budget. I think Tony would agree. The real winners in this are the taxpayers of Pennsylvania who are not going to see tax increases foisted upon them. It held the line on, on spending. It's a sensible budget. It's a realistic budget. Mm -hmm. And it's one that gives us an opportunity to build and save rather than simply tax and spend. Okay, that's the Republican side. Now let's go to my friend Tony May here. And you actually have a, brought a list in that the Democrats made of the winners and losers and all this. Size that up. Well, well I mean, it, the, the simple thing is that poor people, people who need services, are going to be disadvantaged. Uh, not as much as the governor has suggested, a 20% cut that he had proposed in February would have been really serious. A 10% cut still going to hurt, particularly those 60,000 people are going to be cut off of general assistance. Uh, it's the last resort kind of payments that the state provides for people who fall through the cracks and other programs. I believe they were extended one well, month. One, one month to, out of fairness to, to give them an alert that they are being cut off. But Tony, but the governor has told us that there has to be a line drawn in the amount of money we bring in and the amount of money we can spend. I, I think he's right about that. It's called the laws of mathematics. But but we can always bring in more money, or we can change. We gave out 400. I'm sorry, we're talking about winners. I mean, the big winners are are, are businesses in Pennsylvania. They got about 400 million dollars in tax reductions. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying they're the winners, and we balance out against people in need, a quarter million people that get mental health services from their counties. Mm -hmm. There's going to be about a 10% cut there. Right. So so it, it, it's a balance. There are winners and losers. You ask who they are. People who receive services, about a half million overall in the state, will have to make do with a 10% cut. Uh, businesses get a tax break, which let's hope they translate that into jobs. Well, it's it's... Now, it's going to hurt for the people that are going to take the cuts, Charlie, and, you know, the governor's approval rating at its lowest point here, but that's very common at this point in the governor's term. Very common. We've talked about that on several occasions, Rob. His numbers are going to come back up. It's inevitable because he's doing a good job. Business is the employer of Pennsylvania. Small business in particular, people that create the overwhelming number of jobs in this commonwealth and across the country. And the tax breaks that were given to them in this budget deal were ones that had been granted a long time ago. The phasing out of the capital stock and franchise mm -hmm. tax, one of the worst and most onerous taxes on business, the employers of Pennsylvania, is now going to continue to phase out. The point is, ultimately, that business is not so much a tax payer as it is a tax collector. Business gets its taxes from the people who pay other taxes, the consumers of their goods and services, and that ultimately is where the tax burden falls uh, uh, on the rest of us. I've only got 30 seconds left, but do I have to say Obamacare to get you guys fired up to, to <laughs> oh, go yeah, after yes, each other? Yes, I, mean, that's, I that's, thought the budget, you might have some well, major disagreements here. We're getting ready to celebrate here, but, our uh, American well, independence. There's one, thing, yes, there's one thing that's good in the budget that Charlie didn't mention, so I'll mention it for him. Passage of P3 legislation, authorizing public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. It was authored by a Republican, Rick Geist, in the House. It's long overdue in Pennsylvania. I think it'll create jobs. So, Charlie, do you like it as well? I know. I hate to do this, especially on the eve of a holiday, but I agree with Tony. The P3 bill is a great thing for Pennsylvania, and it really gives an opportunity for these public-private partnerships, right. which are the wave of the future. I'm out of time. Do you have a 10-second 4th of July <laughs> thing you can quick, throw quick at us? 10-second 4th of July thing from my old days as a history professor. The two great leaders for American independence, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, both died on July the 4th, 1826, 50 years to the day to after the, day. the to the day. John Adams purportedly, his last words were, Jefferson survives, not knowing that Thomas Jefferson had died two hours earlier. Oh my goodness. Well, there you have the history, some 4th of July history. They didn't have CNN. Thanks again. <laughs> uh, no, they didn't. <laughs> Thanks again for being here. As usual, you can catch our political insiders every Tuesday night right here on CBS 21 News at 530.